What's up guys, Zarek with Underdogs of Addiction here. Today's video, I wanted to speak to those who are struggling with the thought of wanting to take their own life. This can be people who are in early recovery, such as myself, with less than a year of sobriety, um, or for just anybody who's just a human being who is struggling. Um, when we're having thoughts of wanting to take our own life, is usually because we're unhappy with something in our past, something very deep rooted. Um, a lot of us in addiction, um, a lot of us with mental health disorders have a lot of childhood trauma. And even when you work through it, you know, which I have in treatment, uh, a lot of it still will still, you know, linger around. And, um, you know, you'll get caught in the past. You'll think of old relationships, old friendships, things that you used to have, the way things used to be, at least in my experience. And because you can't have the life the way it once was, maybe certain family members have passed away, are, are gone, are not here, and they're never coming back. Relationships, certain times in your life when you were just on top of the world, and you, you don't see any hope. You just look at your life and you're like, this is it for me. Like, I don't see how this can get better. And, you know, I'm here to tell you from my experience in life where I've been through these ups and downs is that I've experienced a lot of lows, but I've experienced a lot of highs and a lot of things do get better. You know, like when I was a kid for the first nine years of my life, we were poor. There's a lot of domestic violence and verbal abuse and I didn't see any hope. I did not see how my mom was going to get us out of this situation. I thought that my life was fucked at a young age. I, knew, I looked around, I saw that we were poor. I saw that I was like one of the only kids in my neighborhood without a dad. I saw a lot of violence and I knew that like something wasn't right. You know, but by the grace of God, my mom got us a, a job for the state without even having a college degree. And for the next eight to nine years, we were middle class, we bought a house, had a fucking beautiful car. Um, I mean, at the time it was a brand new Kia Spectra for us used to have shitty cars. Um, and I just remember that new chapter in my life and just being like, whoa, things are different. Like I, I get everything I, I need now. Um, not everything I want, but pretty much everything I need. Like, And I just remember that perspective shift. And that taught me a valuable lesson that things can get better. And um, you know, I went through some rocky patches again in my life where I was trying to figure things out as a young man and bouncing from job to job. And during that time, I built my music career up in the, the pain of, you know, not being able to do what I want and all the suffering that that caused of just my ADHD and inability to hold and maintain jobs. I knew that if I didn't figure out my passion then I was gonna struggle surviving. Long story short, I ended up building a really successful YouTube music channel that has over like 50 million views, a song that went top 20 in Brazil um, and got a lot of uh, attention for my music. Um, but the way life goes, the old addiction bug came for me and, um, I ended up starting to drink heavily and use cocaine after a series of deaths in my family and all that childhood trauma I never dealt with came up after I was successful. You know, I had money for the first time in my life um, I, and the success and the money taught me a lot of things. Um, and I realized that it didn't really fulfill me. What fulfilled me was making the music every day and putting it out and hearing comments from people about how the song changed their life. Um, it was, the money was nice, whereas I could, I could get the equipment and things that I need, but it didn't make me happy. I mean, my drinking was, was very at all time high back then. I got a DUI, I got arrested. Um, I had a nice car though. I could pay for a $3,500 lawyer. That's the type of things money do, but it doesn't heal inside. And, um, you know, uh, Dealing with my mental illness, you know, my earliest memories of wanting to take my life were probably goes back to 14 years old where I had a lot of issues with my dad, a lot of pain, a lot of him making empty promises, a lot of rejection, no most emotional intimacy with my father. And um, like around 14 was like pretty much the time where I, I finally emotionally cut myself off because I just, I was tired of crying on my birthdays and him not showing up, you know? and. And uh, I remember being 14 and it was like Christmas and my family promised to get me like a brand new Xbox. And they said, no, we're not getting it. 
And that triggered that old response of my dad promising me things and then taking them away. And I remember distinctly telling my mom, I'm gonna kill myself. And I remember her like just trying to console me and like, she was like, I know son, I know you want to, but don't. It was like she understood because my mom was highly traumatized too. And I'm sure she thought of taking her own life many times, you know, and those are my earliest memories. Um, for going on from then, you know, I had a really good time in high school. I was great at football. I was making music. I didn't really have much times back then that I um, wanted to hurt myself. Um, the suicide holidation for me, gr granted, I did have bouts of depression here and there throughout my early 20s and late teens, um, but I was pretty happy. You know what I mean? I was chasing my music and football careers. Um, it wasn't until I started losing a lot of people and then started drinking because the drinking just makes the depression and SI worse and then getting in some just relationships and heartbreak from that and just dealing with being a grown man you know I lived on my own since I was in my mid-20s um, which for some people you know like that's a laughable because they moved out at 18 but if you came from my family it was there's a lot of codependency and stuff but I had lived on my own from 24 25 on the, and still do now I'm 30 34 almost uh you know, so dealing with the perils of being thrown out and like having to figure things out where my mom coddled me up until my early 20s where like I always had a security blanket. Then I just get thrown out and like bills are due, shit's going on, you gotta fucking handle that shit. And um, So it was a lot of that stuff and but a lot of that earlyhood trauma, early trauma, the rejection from my father, the lack of emotional int intimacy with both my parents, it came up with women. And so I know it's a lot of times when I deal with breakups or dysfunctional relationships, those suicidal thoughts would come because it would trigger that old trauma. And uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle says the way out of suicide is to kill the pain body within, and that is to just accept everything as it is, stop fighting it, and just try to live in the present moment. But it's not that simple, you know. We have to we have to uh, condition ourselves to it. It has to become a daily practice where we just embrace everything that's going on, like. Right now in my life, guys, I've lived in, I'm living in my third big city. I moved away from my hometown for the first time really in my whole fucking life. Um, I'm living in sober living. I graduated two treatment centers over the last 11 months. I've been away from everything I know. And that has brought a lot of feelings sometimes of loneliness or just reminiscing of the past. And I caught myself just wishing that I was back in my apartment with my old girlfriend and just, I'll just take how things were. I'd rather just take the, the life I had, even though I was still miserable, then this new life. And the reality is the new life is a lot better than the old one. Um, it's just rose colored glasses and all our blessings are in the present and in the in coming ahead. What's in the past is in the past. And um, so if you're dealing with suicidal adulation, I just want you to let you know that things will get better. Just keep fighting. A wise man told me just grit it out one more day, just one more day things will always get better. And you do not want to take your life before um, you really should. A lot of, it, it's really immaturity. It's us not understanding that things do get better. Things are gonna be hard, but things get better if we just can make a little bit of effort. Um, you know, if you need to get help for your drug addiction, with your mental health, like the tools are out there. You can get help, it's not the end of the road. Um, and I know you might want to pull that trigger. I know you may want to jump off that bridge or drown yourself or whatever your method is, take those pills. But just know that that's all people will remember you for, is for being that person who, who took themselves out. And I've seen friends overdose and die. I've known people who committed suicide and it, it kills the f them too. So you're just transferring your pain to someone else. I wouldn't say suicide is a coward way out. If you're in so much pain and you don't know, you don't have, you don't know what to do. I understand why people do it. But you watching this video, you have an opportunity to change your mind um, if you're thinking about it. Uh, things get better, you know, if you just hang in there and, uh, you know, have faith, you know. I know it sometimes it's hard. I know it's so easy to go down the rabbit hole and be dark and be, you know, in that, that arena. But things are going to get better, you know. Now, people who have extreme physical ailments are extreme mental health disorders, you know. Maybe this video is not for them. There, there are certain situations in life where maybe it is time to, to move on. But for the majority of you guys, you're just going through a hard time. And uh, just know that our ancestors went through harder times and didn't have the help that we'd have and they still survived and we're still here. So 
just we gotta we have to get a little bit of mental fortitude, a little bit of mental toughness, and keep fighting on, and reach out and talk to people. If you're feeling lonely, you know, you gotta do the opposite of what you wanna do. If you're feeling depression, suicidal, you wanna hide, you wanna isolate. You gotta do the opposite of that. You gotta get out, um, find people that like to do what you like to do. Get some roommates if you have to. Move in with some people so you're around people. Talk to your family. Just do the opposite of what your brain's telling you to do and you'll, you will get out of this and you'll survive. And I'm telling you that because this is what I've had to do. I've had to fight tooth and nail the last year and a half as I transitioned from you know, uh, being an active drug addict, alcoholic, um, to now being a recover in recovery. And I never believed drugs and alcohol were really my true problem. My true problem was my trauma and not knowing how to deal with it. And though drugs and stuff were just a coping mechanism, when we address the root issue, the drugs and stuff fade away. Um, you know, so that's kind of really where I'm at with this, guys. And uh, I just want to let you know that you're not alone. I know a lot of us, when you're, when you're in those feelings and you're in your room and you're going through it and you're listening to music and you're chain smoking and or you're eating like shit and you just feel like you're the only motherfucker in the world, just understand that there's millions and millions of people feeling that same way. I'm one of them. Um, but then I also have my glorious, beautiful day still, you know, even in this rebuilding of my life in recovery. Uh, you just got to get through the bad days without running and without trying to escape because um, things, things will get better. And you never know how tough you are until you get pushed to the brink. And trust me, guys, I've, these last two years, I have been pushed in every fucking facet possible. And I'm, I'm starting to see the growth. And, um, yeah, I just want to make these videos and be raw and real with you guys and just be honest about how early recovery is and, you know, all the different things that I can explain about my life to maybe help somebody else. That's what's keeping me going. So please leave a comment about, you know, your experience with dealing with thoughts of wanting to take your life and how you've dealt with it and people who have lost people to suicide. Um, please talk about how that has affected you. Please hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.